friendly reminder to subscribe to my channel. I will be uploading new tutorials, workouts, and some other goodies up here every month. Beginner pole dancers, let's talk about what we just watched. Now, don't freak out, I'm not expecting you guys to learn everything that I just did in that flow. I added in a little bit of extra to that video because when I was a beginner and I was new to my pole journey, I really liked seeing some of the things that I was working up to and things that I could look forward to. We today are just gonna work on the first three moves of that flow. The first three moves of this flow are basic foundational pole moves that you are going to need in order to progress on your pole journey. But I put these basic moves into a combo that will challenge you guys to execute them towards a more intermediate level. So it's giving you guys something to work on now and to continue working up towards. I think that's the best way to learn. And putting these moves and any moves that you learn into a flow or a combo is really important because when you learn just random moves here and there, a lot of times we have no idea what to do with them. So incorporating them into a flow gives these moves context. I find that you more quickly learn how to speak your pole language by doing this. You will also begin to refine your transitions from the beginning of your pole journey rather than what a lot of us do, which is learn moves here and there. And then further down the line, we begin to refine and question, how are we transitioning? So it's a really good skill to have and to be working on from step one. Now, make sure that you are cleared by your doctor to poll. If you have any injuries, questions, concerns, I urge you to be cleared by your doctor or PT before you try any of these moves. Number two, make sure you do a proper warm up and stretch before you do this. Now, if you don't have a warm up that is your go to already, there are thousands and thousands of warm ups and stretches that you can find right here on YouTube. I will upload some in the future. I think that's it. Okay, so let's get to it. Now, before we get started, I want to quickly discuss a couple of terms that you guys will hear me refer to a lot throughout my tutorials. And that is the term inside and the term outside. So if you've taken pole classes before, you're probably already familiar with these terms, but if not, I just wanna make sure we're all on the same page. So if you are standing next to the pole, the side of your body that is closest to the pole is going to be the inside of your body. So that would be your inside hand, your inside leg, your inside hip, etc. The side of the body that's furthest away from the pole is going to be the outside body. So that would be your outside hand, outside leg, outside hip, and so on. The first move we're gonna talk about is called a dip spin or a dip turn. Now here's what it looks like. You are going to start standing next to the pole, up in releve or up on your tippy toes. Your inside hand is going to be up high and you want to make sure to pull that inside shoulder down and squeeze the shoulder blades together. This is going to make sure that you are engaging your lats and protecting your shoulder joint. You're gonna start by taking one step forward on the inside foot and then using those outside toes to trace a big wide circle around the pole. So from the beginning, inside hand up high, take that step forward on the inside foot, and then trace a big circle around the pole with the outside toes. Notice, I'm gonna show you guys again, we start with all of our weight on one foot throughout the spin, and once we've got that full rotation, I'm actually gonna switch feet, placing my weight on my other foot. Now let's discuss a few details that will make your dip turn make a whole lot more sense and it'll make it a little bit easier. Once I take my step forward on that inside leg, as I begin tracing that circle around the pole, notice that inside leg or that stepping leg is bent throughout my spin. So because that leg is bent, as I'm rotating, I'm sitting my booty and my hips to the back. So it's kind of like I'm sitting in a chair. I'm also, as you can see here, rotating my torso to face the pole throughout the spin. Now, once you're comfortable with the most basic execution of this, we can start to add in some details. And the first of which would be what we're doing with that outside arm or that free arm. So as you can see here, I'm using that arm almost as a propeller for my spin or just as a bit of an accessory. So as I step forward on that inside leg, I'm swinging the outside arm up and overhead to go along with my spin. Now again, as you grow comfortable and solid with these basic executions of your dip spin, you can then start to experiment with different styles of executing it. 
So one of my favorite ways of doing that is directing my energy outward throughout my spin. So that means turning my chest out facing away from the pole and leaning my head out away from the pole. As you continue practicing this, you'll start to notice that the height that you put your hand on the pole will determine how fast you go when you spin and how much momentum you have. So the higher you put your hand up on the pole, the smaller the circle is going to be as you rotate around the pole. You will move a little bit slower, you will have less momentum. The lower you put your hand on the pole, the much larger the circle you will have as you rotate. So you'll have a lot more speed and a lot more pull away from the pole. So it's important to start with your hand a little bit higher and progress towards lowering that hand down as you begin to experiment with more speed. Lastly, before we move on to our next spin, I just wanna talk about one variation for those that are struggling with their dip spin. So it's essentially the same thing, but we are now adding our outside hand or that free hand to the pole. So instead of a one hand spin, this is now a two handed spin. So you've got more security, more grip on the pole. You're gonna take that outside arm and reach it across your torso, grabbing the pole in a regular grip. You're using that arm to push into the pole. So you're pulling from that top hand and you're pushing from the bottom hand. So this is what we're gonna call a push-pull grip. Now using that push-pull grip and the security that you get from that extra hand on the pole, you should feel a little bit more comfortable doing your dip spin. The next move we're going to work on is called a back hook spin. And that looks like this. Okay, to begin, you're going to stand next to the pole, up on your tippy toes. You're gonna have your feet spread apart wider than your hips, and your inside hand is gonna be on the pole at head level. So notice my inside arm is bent just about at a 90 degree angle. From here, I'm gonna take my outside hand and reach it up overhead. I can even arch over just slightly to the side in order to get that outside hand on the pole. I'm grabbing it in a regular grip, thumb up. So from this position, I wanna be able to keep all of my weight on my inside leg. As you can see, I'm lifting that outside leg up off of the floor. All of the weight is on that inside foot. I'm gonna use the outside leg and actually swing it backwards, swing it behind me as I lean back, fall back, and begin to rotate on that inside foot. Now notice as I rotate, I'm able to pull the pole into my inside armpit. I'm actually able to wrap that armpit or that bicep around the pole. Another thing you'll notice here, the back of your inside knee pit, you can see on the screen, has come in contact with the pole. When you are doing this spin, when you feel the back of that knee pit come to the pole, you wanna bend that knee, wrapping that knee around the pole. So ultimately, we will have both knees bent. But let's go back and talk about it from the beginning once again. So you're standing next to the pole, your inside hand is at head level, outside hand comes up above head, I'm gonna swing back with my outside foot as I lean back into the spin, and I'm gonna bend both knees as I begin rotating. Let's discuss a couple of notes on form. So again, as I mentioned before, we want our hips pressed forward in this move. So the hips are in front of the pole. In the beginning, a lot of people tend to keep our hips piked and our booty pressed to the back. If you notice yourself doing that, make sure you practice engaging the glutes and pressing the hips forward to the front of that pole. Again, my shoulders are pulled down and I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together. So here you can see it one more time. And again, I'm taking the spin to the floor, to my knees in this example, but you don't have to do that if you don't like. You could just place your feet on the floor if you feel like you need to stop. As you get more comfortable with this spin, you will be able to rotate more around the pole. In the beginning, it's very normal to only do a half of a rotation, one rotation, or to barely spin at all, and that's okay. Once you get more comfortable, you'll begin to get more rotation out of your spin, and not just this spin, but all spins. Okay, our third move is called a windmill, and that looks like this. So to set up for a windmill, we are going to use what's called a stronghold grip. Now, as you can see here, I'm wrapping my inside bicep or armpit around the pole, and my outside hand is going to come up above head. Notice my hips are pressed to the front of the pole, not behind the pole, not next to the pole, in front of the pole. Again, my shoulders are pulled down and I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together. 
So just to demonstrate what's about to happen, basically you're going to lead with your inside leg. So as you can see here, I'm lifting my inside leg up, reaching it across and up and over, kind of drawing a rainbow with those toes. Your outside leg is going to follow your inside leg in that rainbow. So squeezing the pole in your bicep, engaging your lats, pulling both shoulders down away from the ears. I'm gonna lift my inside leg up, extending it across and kicking it up and over in that rainbow shape as my outside leg follows up and over. As my feet come to the floor, I can release my bicep and I land on the other side of the pole. So you really want to squeeze that bicep around the pole and you're pulling up with both hands throughout the windmill to maintain your lift and your grip. And here you can see me demonstrating a windmill from the other side. So again, the weight is on the outside foot. I lift my inside leg to lead with that leg, kicking it across, up and over as my outside leg follows in this rainbow, landing on the other side of the pole. Now, it's very normal at first to not be able to lift your leg super high. Super normal, totally okay. It's also normal to feel like you are kind of falling down the pole as you go for your first windmill. As you gain strength in your upper body and strength in your hand grip, you will be able to hold yourself up for longer and you'll be able to lift yourself a lot easier. Now, once you are comfortable with these, windmills are actually really great practice for inverts. All right, friends, let's do choreo. So now we are going to connect these three basic moves into a small flow. Before we get into it, let me remind you what this choreo looks like. So we're gonna start with our dip turn. You're standing next to the pole, your inside hand is up high, lat engaged, shoulder down away from the ear. You're stepping forward on that inside leg and then tracing a big circle around the pole with your outside toes. Once I come around to the other side, I'm switching feet, turning towards the pole, and I'm taking my free hand and grabbing the pole. I'm pivoting on the ball of my foot as I pull the pole into my inside bicep. So I've done a full rotation and now the side of my body is pressed into the pole. So as you can see, I'm kind of set up here for my back hook spin. All of my weight is on my inside leg and I'm gonna use my outside leg to swing back as I lean backwards, hooking both knees around the pole. So again, from the beginning and we will add on one more step so we're going for our dip turn, step forward inside foot, big wide circle with the outside foot traveling around the pole. After my full rotation, I'm switching feet, pivoting towards the pole as I grab the pole with my outside hand and pull the pole into that armpit. Then I'm swinging with my outside leg backwards and bending both knees around the pole. Now this time, I want you to take your outside foot and place it on the floor. Now that's gonna stop your spin before you have a chance to slide down to the floor. It might be helpful to practice this part a few times, so now's probably a great time to pause the video and repeat this portion of the choreo until you feel comfortable. Okay, so we're gonna start from the beginning and then add on the very last step. So first our dip turn, big wide circle, pivoting once we come through our rotation, pulling the pole into that bicep and swinging back for our back hook spin. We're stopping our spin short as we place that outside leg or the outside foot on the floor. And we're gonna begin to pull our inside leg forward, tucking that knee up towards our chest. Now notice I reposition that inside hand so that I've got my bicep wrapped around the pole. And once I feel solid there, I'm extending the inside leg, sending it up and over in my rainbow as my outside leg follows. So I'm finishing in my windmill. Let's do it again. From the beginning, dip turn, pivot into the bicep, swing back for our back hook, foot comes to the floor, I'm setting up for my windmill, I'm solid in my stronghold grip, pulling my inside leg up and over as the outside leg follows, landing on the other side of the pole. And that's it. 
So again, guys, I know the three moves we worked on today are beginner, but as I mentioned earlier, this specific flow, this combo is forcing you to try to execute these moves towards more of an intermediate level. So it's okay if this feels very difficult right now. Pole takes practice and repetition and repetition and repetition. So you've really got to do these things over and over again before you start to feel comfortable. Please don't get discouraged if anything feels really difficult during your first session. And if all else fails, I always achieve my greatest successes by taking a step away, ending my practice, getting some rest, getting some food, getting some water and coming back to it another day. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You can find more tutorials and workouts on my website, sammypacone.com. Have a lovely day, friends.